In this video, I will be giving you an overview of the basics of ToonSquid. I will not be covering every detail. For that, you can visit the handbook at toonsquid.com handbook, and you can follow this channel for more videos in the future. Just for reference, the app you see here is on version 1.3, so by the time you watch this in the future, some things might look a bit different. With that out of the way, let's now look at ToonSquid. This first screen that you see when you open the app is your project library. When you want to create a new project, simply tap this plus button and then you're prompted to configure the settings for your new project. We can choose a name, a resolution for our pixel layers and the frame rate, which controls how smooth our animation can be. You can also change the default workflow here to use more motion graphics oriented settings in the editor, but in this video we will keep it on traditional for a frame by frame workflow. You can change all of these settings afterwards, except for the resolution, so please make sure that you always choose the correct resolution for your project. Once you have the settings you want, just hit the create button. This opens the new project and takes us to the editor, where you will be creating your animation. We have the canvas in the center, where you can pinch with two fingers to zoom and to move the canvas. If you pinch and let go quickly, the canvas will reset its zoom and position. The different tools that you can use to add contents to your animation are here on the left. Right now the brush tool is selected, so we can just start drawing on the canvas. We can also undo and redo all of our edits using these buttons on the right. Tapping the brush button again opens the brush library, where you can select different brushes, create your own or import them, and also edit all of the brush settings to customize them for your specific needs. Up here you can change the brush size and the brush opacity. Just like the brush tool, you can use the eraser tool to erase your brush strokes and the smudge tool to smear them. As an alternative to the undo buttons on the right, you can undo your edits by tapping the canvas with two fingers and redo them by tapping with three fingers. The fill tool can be used to quickly fill the inside of a connected region with a single color. Up here is where you can open the color picker with which you can change the color of the brush. Alternatively, you can use the pipette tool to select a color from the canvas. Either switch to it via the pipette button on the left or by touching and holding on the canvas with your finger until it shows up. The transform tool allows you to scale, move and rotate your layers. As with all other tools, the transform tool options are up here. You can for example turn off the snapping. And if you ever forget what any of these icons mean, just tap this little triangle which expands the buttons and also shows the labels for each one. You can quickly delete the selected drawing layer using this delete button here on the right. Let's now look at the path tool. You can use this to add vector shapes to your animation. Every time you tap the canvas, it adds a new control point to the outline of the shape. If you touch and then immediately drag without lifting off of the screen, two Bezier control handles will get extended, which turn the neighboring connection segments into curves instead of straight lines. Tapping the first control point again will close the path. You can always change the behavior of each control point again by selecting a different symmetry setting or by setting it to be a sharp corner. Sometimes you don't want to create your own custom shapes by placing each control point. In that case, just tap the path tool button again and select one of the shape presets from the shape library. Changing the scaling mode to freeform in the transform tool lets you change the horizontal and vertical scale of a layer independently of each other. Let's take a closer look at the color picker. Use the tabs down here to see different interfaces for selecting colors. In the color palette tab you can select the color palette that should always be shown in the other tabs. You can also create new color palettes and add the currently selected color to them by tapping one of the empty slots in the palette. The button below the color picker shows us the list of drawing layers. 
tap a layer to select it or drag and drop them to change their order. You can also hide layers using this button that looks like an eye. The inspector here is where you can see and edit all of the properties of the selected layer. The library is where you can import images, audio clips and videos and add them to your animation. You can also create separate animation clips to use as reusable symbols in your animation, but we won't cover that topic in this video. Let's get to one of the most important parts of the editor, the timeline. This is where you define how your animation behaves over time. The blue play cursor shows us that we are currently on frame 1 of our animation. If we add a drawing here, it is by default only visible on frame 1. We can now move to frame 2 and add another drawing. This is how we can build up our animation piece by piece. Now, a lot of the time we want a single drawing to be visible for more than just one frame. We can do that by dragging one of the edges of the drawing. Now this drawing is visible from frame 1 to frame 11. Let's pinch the timeline with two fingers to see more frames at once. You can also increase the duration of a drawing by selecting a frame and then tapping the Extend Drawing button at the bottom. The Add Drawing button next to it can be used to add a new empty drawing to the timeline. Tapping this button here enables what is called Onion Skins. Onion Skins show you the content of the previous and next drawings as reference for the movement that you are animating. The red circle here is the first drawing. If we move our play cursor back into the first drawing, now our second drawing is shown in green. Let's add an empty drawing between these two and use the onion skins to place a new circle between the existing ones. We can hit the play button in the timeline to play our animation. By default, the playback stops once it reaches the end of the animation. We can use the loop button to make it loop back to the beginning automatically. Tapping the play cursor again allows us to define a smaller region to be looped. This loop setting only affects the playback in the editor and not in your final export. If you double tap and drag in the timeline, you can select multiple drawings at once. Simply drag and drop your selected drawings to change their timing or drag a retiming handle to change all of their durations at once. When this little magnet button down here is disabled, you can only move and edit your drawings until they reach another drawing. When you enable magnetic mode in the timeline, the neighboring drawings will also shift around to make space for your duration and timing edits. Now let's take a closer look at drawings and layers in ToonSquid. A drawing is used to show one or more drawing layers for a certain period of time in the animation. Here we have a drawing between frames 1 and 9 that shows two drawing layers. We can add a different drawing between frames 10 and 20. This one only has one drawing layer. You can see our layer list on the right always shows the drawing layers of the selected drawing. Both of these drawings and therefore also all of these drawing layers are in the same animation layer in the timeline. We can add more animation layers to the timeline with this plus button. This allows us to create separate drawings that are visible at the same time like you can see here. If we open up the inspector, we can see all of our layer properties. When I drag the opacity slider here, only the opacity of the pixel layer, which is a selected drawing layer, is changed. If we instead switch the inspector to the animation layer tab, we now see the properties of the animation layer. When I change the opacity here, it affects all drawing layers in all drawings of this animation layer. Tapping the selected drawing again brings up a list of different actions. We can split the drawing at the current frame, which copies all of its drawing layers into the new drawing. We can quickly select all layers in the drawing, for example in order to move them all at the same time, or in order to duplicate them. It is also possible to select and deselect additional layers one by one by dragging them from left to right. And finally, this is how we can delete a drawing completely. Keyframes are one of the most powerful features of ToonSquid. A keyframe is simply the value of a layer property at a single point in time. ToonSquid automatically animates the value of the layer property between different keyframes that you define, which means that you don't have to manually draw every frame one by one. Let's take a look at that in practice. We start by turning on keyframing mode using this button down here. 
This now shows us all of the properties that support keyframes of the selected drawing layer. In the case of this pixel layer, that's the position, rotation, scale and opacity. The small x can be used to hide properties that we don't care about. As mentioned, the keyframes that you see here only belong to the selected drawing layer. For example, if we select this path layer instead, we see a lot more properties in the timeline. Ok, now let's try to use keyframes to animate this layer between frame 1 and frame 24. First of all, because this is a pixel layer, we have to make sure to turn off the Edit Pixels option in the Transform tool, because we don't want to edit the pixels inside of the layer, but rather move the entire layer from one point to another. Now, with the play cursor on frame 24, we can simply drag the layer on the canvas, and as you can see, this automatically adds a new position keyframe on frame 24. On the frames in between, the layer now moves from one keyframe to the next. Let's repeat this one more time. Pick a different frame and change the position of the layer. Now we have three keyframes. What you can also see on the canvas is the entire motion path of our layer. We can edit the individual keyframes directly on the canvas as well. We can even extend Bezier handles to make our layers move along a curve instead of straight lines. If we want to change the timing of our keyframes, we can just drag and drop them in the timeline. You can immediately see the effect this has on the motion path before even playing the animation. The position is of course not the only property that we can animate with keyframes. We can do the same for the opacity as well. Let's reduce it to 12%. Keyframes can also be copied and pasted, as you can see here. It is important to understand that the keyframing mode not only shows us the layer properties in the timeline, but by default also causes new keyframes to be added automatically when we change any of the properties like we've just seen. If you instead prefer to manually add keyframes, you can turn off this default behavior in the settings. Now, if we drag the opacity slider on frame 20, we are editing the existing keyframe on frame 1. If we want a new keyframe like before, we need to add it with the Add Keyframe button. So far, all of the animation between our keyframes has a constant speed, which can often look fairly unnatural. Fortunately, if we select a property between two keyframes, we have the option to change the easing curve of that previous keyframe. This defines the speed of the animation between these keyframes. Changing it to quadratic or cubic, for example, makes the movement start slowly and then speed up before it finally slows down again, because we have the ease in out mode selected. If we change it to ease in, the animation starts slow and speeds up towards the end. And with ease out, we begin fast and then gradually slow down. As mentioned, each easing curve belongs to one keyframe and controls the animation from that keyframe to the next keyframe. The keyframe on frame 24 still has a linear easing curve, which doesn't matter because there is no keyframe after it. Once we are happy with our animation, we can go to Actions and then Export to export it in a format that you can use outside of TwinSquid. On this screen, you get to choose an export format and customize different settings depending on the format you have selected. You can export your animation as a video, a GIF, as a single or multiple images, and as a TuneSquid project file, which you can then back up somewhere or import on a different iPad. Once you're happy with your settings, just hit export and select where you want to save the file. That was it for this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments and I will be happy to answer them all. As mentioned in the beginning, TuneSquid has many more features that were not covered in this video, a lot of which are used in this demo animation that comes with TuneSquid, so you can open it up and see exactly how it was made. There will be more quick tutorial videos on this channel that will focus on one feature at a time, so please let me know if you would like to see anything in particular. Thank you very much for watching.